What up, ladies and gents? Today we have some news regarding Tarkov and Tarkov Arena. Those news are based on the TwitchCon that is happening right now. BSG are there and there's been a couple of interviews, one with Nikita on the TwitchCon stage and one of Russian YouTubers interviewed Jean. Uh, this guy's a part of BSG team. He's one of the lead uh, game designers, I believe. Met him RL once, really cool and chill guy. So we're gonna go th through this short interview with John. And uh, then I'm going to focus on the main things from the um, interview with Nikita. I will skip a couple of questions. And funnily enough, there was no translated, like there was no version of the interview in English. So there was a written interview in Russian, which was translated from English from the live broadcast. I took the Russian interview and I translated it back into the English. So some of the main points, um, they, 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 they stay the same, but some of the small details might be missed. However, I will give you, I will ask, like, I will I'll read up the most um, interesting questions. I will skip some of the questions. But if you want to watch the whole interview that is like 40 minutes long, I think I will leave the link um, down below if you want to watch it for yourself. So let's start with the Russian interview. So from this interview, we'll learn that release of Escape from Tarkov is planned uh, for the next year, so 2025. And from John's words, all team is working really hard for it and they will do their best to deliver um arena xp is farming is getting farmed way too fast so in the next patch that is 100 percent getting nerfed free weekend on arena showed a really good result every hour there is a few thousand new players registering in arena um arena breakout infinite devs will always be one step behind escape from tarkov right now chinese are just copying uh, Tarkov and they don't really realize how much is gonna change after the storyline quests get added to the game. Therapist is actually a really really angry um, bee that has uh, a lot of uh, skeletons in the closet. So uh, nevertheless all the quests which uh, show how nice she is, she actually isn't. And John also confirmed that she will be a physical trader on the location, just like proper that's been shown in one of the trailers. So yeah, therapist will be a uh, physical, physical model, physical um, woman in Tarkov. So women, women are finally in Tarkov. Everybody who wished for it, <coughs> you will be, you will be able to see a women in the raid. And right now, let's move to the interview from um, from Nikita. I think I'll play some of the new arena map uh, in the background so you can check the map out, see some of your favorite streamers fight together. And we're going to go through the interview. I'll read the questions, I'll read the answers, maybe share some ideas. Once again, I'll skip some of the questions. If you want to watch the interview for yourself, I will leave the link down below. It's 40 minutes long. If you have that time, feel free to watch it. Question. Are you happy with the current in-game economy and progression? Will there be more hardcore enemies in the game? Answer. This wipe ain't it in terms of the player's progress. Arena Sync and Marathon event gives way too much XP for players and all of this will be nerfed in the future. Every wipe is different and next wipe will be balanced in the opposite direction. Meaning that in the next wipe, uh, leveling up will be slower, people will receive less XP for the quests, um, especially Marathon quests and Arena as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if BSG nerf Arena XP arena dailies and weeklies xp and maybe the amount of rubles you earn from arena question how will tarkov feel in the future will it become mmo or stay session based shooter with raid system answer majority of bsg team is working on getting the game ready for the release especially the storyline quests after finishing those quests players will be able to escape from tarkov Raid system will stay the same, there will be MMO aspects, however the gameplay won't really change much. So overall the raid system stays, there will be no open world. Um, as Nikita mentioned on one of the previous podcasts, marathon event will be added to the usual mode as well. So if you really want to, you will be able to travel from map to map. And this is the kind of uh, open world we're going to get, I guess. So you don't necessarily have to go to your stash every single time, you can travel all the maps if you want to, and then go to stash. Up to you. Um, also, players will be able to remove flea market from their account. There will be a special hardcore mode, hardcore mode settings, um, as well as it can be one of the prestige options. So whenever you prestige or whenever you start an account, you will have like a hardcore mode selection, which will uh, 
give you a chance to disable some of the options. For example, I don't know, you, you will be able to disable flea market if you want to. And uh, for example, you will be able to disable buying items from traders for cash and leave barter items only as is usually used in the hardcore mode and I guess other, other things as well. Question. What are the plans after the release of Tarkov? Will you keep on working on Russia 28, 2028 or do something else? Answer. Tarkov will exist after the release of the game. There will be DLCs and other updates. However, we will work on a new game that is already in the pre-production phase. And we want Tarkov to be complete uh, to be complete at release, to be as complete at release as possible. So we don't add anything new to the game, but we'll keep on making it better. We'll keep on working on the game for at least a decade, 10 years, um, so it can become one of the classics as per se. Question. Did you expect to create a new genre of gaming? All extraction shooters are called Tarkov killers those days. Answer. It was quite unexpected for us. Maybe it will sound dumb, but we are trying our best. Um, it's been 10 years and we still have a lot of surprises for you. I'm sure you will like them, those surprises, um, and we'll love to see your reaction. Question, will there be more end game content in the future? Like items that stay with you even after the wipe happens, some trophies for hideout. What kind of ideas do you have regarding monetization of the game in the future? Answer, as I said earlier, the game will have prestige system that will make the gameplay more cyclic. Players will receive unique items. <coughs> Once you are done with the storyline uh, quest, you can prestige and you will get one of the prestige points. There will be a few prestige levels. All high-end content will be related to the storyline quests. You will need to spend a lot of money and finish a lot of quests. I think that some of the um, cosmetics options, some of the jackets, maybe some armbands, will be viable for prestige points. For example, you prestige three times or four times, and you use those four prestige coins to buy that item. I think that's how it's going to work. And regarding the high-end content that involves a lot of money. I don't know. As Nikita said, it will be related to the storyline quests. I guess we'll see. Question. Do you plan on reworking dailies and weeklies in Tarkov? They are way too random and rewards are not worth it a lot of times. Answer. There will be a small rebalance of those quests. We have a base for the whole system. Sometimes the quests don't stack well with the rewards, but we will always try to balance it out. Maybe there will be a rebalance next patch. So generally speaking, they talk about different quests. Um, the one Nikita mentioned in the interview is the quest, for example, that whenever you are a scav and the daily quest asks you to kill scavs, that doesn't really make too much sense because you will scav wrap. So such things will be fixed and rebalanced. And I guess uh, if you're high level and some of the quests don't give you much XP or they give you some lame items, that'll be fixed um, and buffed as well. Question. Do you plan on reworking... Oh, that's the same question, never mind. Um, question. What kind of loot economy do you think is needed in the game? Should all resources be very limited or do you want players to hunt expensive items on purpose? Answer. I always loved hardcore games. The main concept of Tarkov was uh, players fighting for survival. Everything was very limited and if you were able to find 5 to 10 bullets and one grenade in a week you would be considered to be lucky. A lot of people from the mainstream that learned about the game called it way too hardcore and that's why we transferred our game from hardcore to midcore. Um, so yeah, I personally don't know how Tarkov would have played if you were able to find five bullets in a week of gameplay. So that's like, what, one bullet per day on average? Uh, with the 200 guns we have in the game, it will take you literally a whole year of playing to shoot from each gun at least once. So that doesn't really sound fun to me. I don't know, that sounds more like DayZ or something. I personally would not be a fan of that. All right, question. Do you consider Arena becoming free to play in the future? Answer, not sure about it. Arena is a big part of AFT. Surely you can play it separately, but it is heavily involved in Tarkov's lore. So I'm not sure if it will become free to play. The idea of free to play weekends is great and we'll keep it in the future for the future weekends. Um, I don't know. Mm, I think making, like, if you want to focus on Arena as on an eSports, they surely need to make the game free to play. Because majority of people that play in eSports, like, whether if you think about CS, League, 
Dota, I don't know, Overwatch in the past. Uh, we cannot count Rainbow Six, because you have to pay for Rainbow Six. But Valorant. Uh, but a lot of games are free to play. And uh, a lot of people that play those games are either students, um, school kids, you know, that can potentially play in esports. And they don't have uh, money to buy a lot of games, even though they don't have a lot of hours to put into those games. And at the same time, I think Arena needs a huge buff in FPS. Because right now you need to spend like three to four thousand dollars um, if you want to play the game with a stable 200 FPS. And that's way too much. Like majority of the games that I mentioned before, you need like a one thousand dollar PC to play to play it really stable compared to frames. So that's another limitation, um, in my opinion. Question. How do you find balance in between adding new content and the QOL, quality of life improvements? Answer. We have separate teams working on the new content and QLs. There is a big list of QL changes, but we cannot add all of it. So we add only the most important ones. The new content is exact opposite. Uh, opposite. Those guys work nonstop and they are not related to QL improvements, QL department whatsoever. Question. A year ago, you talked about Tarkon. Tarkon is like a um, physical meetup where different streamers, Tarkov players can come together. Basically like TwitchCon, but only for Tarkov and fully organized by BSG. Uh, you talked about Tarkon, which would be fully about Tarkov. Um, answer. We do plan on doing Tarkon. However, we have frozen for it now. Right now, we are working on uh, TwitchCon, Tokyo Game Show and others. We calculated a rough estimate of how many players are interested in Tarkov worldwide, and the number is around 50 million, 50 million uh, people. So yeah, Tarkon will happen one day, 100%. I mean, I don't know, I was personally really excited about Tarkon, because it would be a great way for all the streamers, all Tarkov streamers, assembled together, like no matter which continent you're from, a lot of Tarkov um, players. Uh, viewers could have uh, come there and BG said that originally they planned Tarkon for October, November, December this year, but uh, it's been cancelled as we can uh, tell. So yeah, that's a bit sad and I hope it happens one day so uh, everybody can meet up and uh, I can meet some of you guys and gals. <laughs> All right, next question. Do you plan on doing any arena land tourneys? Answer. We've been working in the direction uh, if we see a need in organizing tournaments like that, we would do it. Well, if Arena is an eSport and BG want to push the eSport part of Arena, I think LAN tournaments is a must. So players can play with the lowest ping as possible, everybody plays on the same PCs, nobody is uh, cheating, everybody is under the same condition. LANs are a must. And... Uh, I mean, there, there, there's like a decent amount of people playing in esports in Arena. The scene is not big, but seeing some lands would be really cool in my opinion. I'd love to see them, man. It's a shame, it's a big shame there aren't any. <sighs> Question. How did the game development change after the release of PvE mode? Answer. A small part of our team is working on PvE mode, but we do have... Uh, some so like a small a small part is working on the PV, but we do have some plans about adding uh, additional features. We didn't expect that many people to be interested in PV, so we allocated more people to work on it shortly. So basically, BG didn't expect that many people to be interested in PVE, and uh, since they seen that, there are some people working on PV now. Question: Do you plan on adding more support mode like mod M O D mod support for Tarkov? Yes, after the release of the game. I personally believe that's going to be the future of Tarkov. If BG want to sustain the game, if they want to make sure that players have fun, mods are a must. BG cannot hire a limited amount of people and literally print content for Tarkov nonstop. Mod players, mod people, people that do with mods, they can. So mod support, in my opinion, is a must after the release of the game. It's going to make the Tarkov one of the greatest games on the earth. And it's going to be fun for us, for players. If you want to play hardcore, you'll play with hardcore mods, you know, like on hardcore servers. If you want to have PvP, go to PvP, blah, 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 etc, etc, etc. Alright, there will be a neck hitbox rework. A lot of people complain about neck hitbox. It feels weird, feels unfair. So whether BG going to be adding some additional armor for the neck or removing or making the hitbox smaller, I don't know. But there will be some kind of rework. Um, 2022 20, Unity update um 
So the question is, will people feel the difference? And the answer is no, people will, you will not feel any difference when the game swaps to the Unity 2022, but the new engine, uh, the new version of the engine will give BG more tools to work with. So don't expect any higher frames instantly as soon as we swap to the engine nothing is going to change hopefully there is no box and fps is not lower if fps is the same and there is no box it's a great it's a great freaking success okay in the future bg can utilize those tools to make uh fps better that's how it works um and uh yeah i've skipped i've skipped a couple of questions which i didn't find too interesting or nikita answered them billion times in the past uh so more or less this is it this video is like 15 minutes long, so I hope I saved you some time. Give this video a thumbs up and share your thoughts on those two interviews down below. I would appreciate that a lot. And once again, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you still haven't. Have a wonderful rest of the day and I will see you next time.